working? Uh, yeah. Testing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that screen looks pretty good if you're trying to show the palette and the reference at all. Yes. Go a little bit. There you go. To the edge of the painting. I may even need a bigger brush, truthfully. Some, uh, okay. So I think for the shot, if we could move the camera to the right, maybe a eight or ten inches, and then expand to the left. Hang on. Uh, avoid, avoid the shoulder blocking the more on the canvas. So move it more. Uh, towards you. I, I don't know. Right, it's not clear through uh, cyberspace. <laughs> this way. Yeah. And then kind of angle it a touch so it's going towards the canvas. Doesn't have so much of Greg's back, you know, or shoulder on it. He's painting with his right hand. Yeah. So let's kind of just kind of go around that a little bit more, I think. Yeah. And maybe rotate a touch like uh, just you know the right part of the phone. No, no, we'll rotate the phone. Just just the. Yeah, a little bit like that. There you go. I think that's... Yeah. Is that good, Mike? Yeah, that was very good. I just want to make sure we have the reference and the... Ah, uh, right, right, right. Right. Is that, is that in that frame still? Then, then let's just move it back a little bit to the right. <clears throat> is, it, is it in there? Because I can't see it. Right. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Sorry, I stepped away for a second there. Is uh, how are we doing on the on the log logging back in there, Scott? Logging back in where? Oh, it's, it's live. Oh, we're live. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we, we already have uh, someone waving at us. <laughs> great, great, great. Sorry, we already have uh, someone waving at us. Okay, so we can be heard too, by the way, on there. So. Can't wait till noon. So I guess we can be heard too by the man there, so. Can't wait till noon. Oh. So my audio is, I mean, my computer audio is coming through over there, so I should probably turn mine off. Correct? Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll just wait for your prompts through. Chat, chat, yeah.
Or can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we're just trying to, uh, we're good on uh, YouTube, which is awesome, but we're not seeing you on Facebook right now. Oh, no kidding. So I just want to double check to make sure we're not going private. And then I think Scott didn't notice it. Um, is there a lock symbol at the top corner? If so, unlock it. If it's, if it's, at the, if it's locked to just your page, it might be a little like kind of like a deadlock um, symbol at the top right corner of the post. So I'm seeing it here on live. And it says, come and join my mob cam live stream. So I'm, and I'm seeing people posting things. Oh, you are. So people are, are interacting with this. Yeah, they're saying back again, Betsy in Virginia. Hi, Craig, I'm enjoying your live feed. Hi, Craig and Anna, Linda Monahan from okay. Chicago. Um, do you mind uh, putting the link? I, might be, I guess I might be on the wrong. Do you mind sending that link that you're seeing um, in, in, the, in the text here just so I can figure out why I'm not oh, seeing Craig, it? Oh, Craig. Huh? How, okay, wait, let's see. You mean this link? Hang on. Mm -hmm. That one? Is that what you mean? I didn't see it come through for some reason. Oh, sorry. I hit privately. Yeah, I yes. Let me see. I mean, if, you, if, you, if people are commenting, that's a good sign. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But. What? Unless, unless maybe it's only set to friends, maybe. No. It's mm. full on Facebook. Oh. How do I do that then? <laughs> how do I... Ch maybe to... Yeah, I think, I think it's probably sending um, to your wall, but the, you might have a, a uh, setting from a Facebook setting that, that only allows friends to see. I think it. I think it says everyone, but okay. well. I'm not sure where to find that. Anyway, as long it's as delayed. I can see it and you guys can see it, yeah, it looks well, delayed. Mostly as long as the fact that other people are commenting on it means means other people are seeing it. So I'm, my guess is it's just. I hope it's not delayed for people. Friends. Yeah, for some reason it looks delayed. Yeah. <laughs> I get. Facebook is always a little delayed, by the way. Oh, okay. Just, oh, you know that. I'll always be a little behind YouTube. I'm not sure why. You know, it's one of those things I've noticed at all our tests. Yeah, for some um, reason, that looks delayed. Yeah, so now I'm, I can hear me saying that. <laughs> yeah, mic ourselves there. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do I do that again? <laughs> I'm getting... you're, you're seeing it, you're seeing it on your side for Facebook, right? And it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well then that's good. I mean, it's the same thing as last week then. So that's, that's fine. Yeah. So, I mean, don't you think so? I mean, if she's seeing it. I mean, it, the more importantly, because she'd be logged in and seen, but if other people are commenting on it, then that means it's at least going to the friends of the page. Yeah, and yeah, we're going to YouTube, and I think that's mission accomplished. I mean, as of now. It's, I, I can't share my screen. It says host disabled attendee screen sharing.
my screen. Hang on. Yeah, it's del really delayed. Jamie and Gabriel are on and... <clears throat> Who? Jamie and Gabriel. Jeannie Provinson. Stacy Street. Hey, Stacy. I was going to put on... I can't. You can put on your... You get into my Facebook with your uh, phone. It's just right. going live in 10 minutes. So. Should I stop sharing or screen share? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, like, you know, I haven't, I don't know, I'm live on YouTube, I'm good, uh, the Facebook, I haven't been able to see, but I'm not a friend, uh, uh, so, you know. Yeah, I think the main point of that was just so uh, Scott could see the settings, make sure we're all good. Yeah, Scott, you got the YouTube page, man, uh, so I think we're good. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, let me scroll up a little bit. And go, go where you sit, where you see the uh, little on that where it has like the people in the down arrow. Click on that. Oh, in the down arrow. It says, it says 12 minutes, and there's like a little people icon in the down arrow, a little above, a little higher. Uh, 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 uh. Right there. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, okay, yeah, go public. Boom. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, so stop sharing now.
Yeah, I got enough marks down, I think. Okay. Gives me basic proportion. Oh, gosh. Here, I... Okay, now I, I do see it. What? My phone. Messages. There you go. John Stanley. Stacy Street. Hey, you guys. Christina. Uh, hi, Christina. I'm just going to use Zoom for your show, but let me know if you think this is preferable. Huh. Let's promote that. Let's talk about she it. She said this looks pixelated on her end. Oh. Hmm. How long? <clears throat> We're just about there. Let's see. What do we got here, time wise? 754. Yeah, okay. our audio is live right now, so. What well, I thought I. Thanks for the reminder. Can I take the sign down? Uh, you got a few minutes. Yeah, but let's wait till I got my four minutes left. Okay. About another minute. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to take the sign down now. Video quality is very low. I've never had problems with that. Who, who said that? A couple of people. Oh, shh. I know. I wonder if it's because they're screaming. I hope not. It's been great every week. Looks clear from here. But. Those of you guys that are getting good, clear images, let me know. Oh, Stan. Stan from Italy. Time we got. You want me to say something so you see how the.
really delayed for some reason. But... Was it last time? Oh, man. Okay. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to um, my blundering through another uh, live painting. And this time I'm trying a 24 by 24 on a piece of gessoed hardboard um, or masonite. And somebody had requested the last time that we try something um, wildlife. And since I've painted these guys before, I haven't painted this painting, but I've painted these uh, water buffalo before, I thought I'd tackle it again since I'm somewhat familiar with them. Um, the photo is a photo that I shot uh, up at Safari West, not actually too far from here, uh, about 20 minutes north of Santa Rosa. So um, I'm going to talk as I go through it. You guys are going to hopefully be able to see what I'm doing. I made some very quick proportional marks up here. So I kind of had have things kind of placed but not drawn well. And I'm probably, in a one-hour painting, I'm not going to do a really super refined drawing like I might do on a 20 hour, 12 hour, whatever painting. So um, a lot of the stuff that I'm gonna be doing is abbreviated, meaning it's gonna be shortened from what I would do in a longer painting, but it'll give you the idea. So basically I've got my overall proportioning in here. I'm gonna take this tree and I'm gonna bring it on into, uh, into about here because I wanna balance the composition a little bit. Sure. So we're gonna, a little tree a little bit thinner than it is. Um, I have basically the placement of these water buffalo, and I'm not going to draw a lot more. We're just going to kind of double check some angles. And all I do, all I did with this is I did what I call a ghost drawing, and all that is is a is your first guess at your proportions and your gestures. And when I draw, I generally draw with relatively straight lines, uh, just because. I find it better than trying to do loops and things like that. So I get them drawn up like with a lot of straight lines. But I have, I think, enough down here where I can actually proceed. And that's all I'm trying to do in these, in these quicker paintings. So I am going to grab a good sized brush. I'm not going to start with a little brush. I think I'll start with, I have an inch and a half gesso brush here. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of turf because I want the paint thin and loose. I'm going to take a little bit of green and I'm going to look at this kind of area around these guys. I'm going to set these colors and values up very, very briefly and in somewhat of an indicative fashion. So it's not uh, what you, any anything that anyone could even think of as refined, but it'll give it'll give me a, an idea of where value-wise these guys should be so that and that looks pretty good right there so i'm just going to kind of rough this in i mixed a little bit of a sap green a little bit of a, uh what is that yellow ochre and, uh, and i threw a little blue into it but i just want to get a tone in here some of that will be the underpainting that i retain when i actually uh go over and do more with it so we're gonna go there and what i'll do is every when i run a little low i'll mix up a new color uh, each time I mix up a color, it may be a little bit different, but I always find in nature, you don't have the same color everywhere. So we're going to go a little bit of a duller green up in here. It's a little greener, so I'm going to add some, maybe a little bit more blue or something as we move to the left. So we're going to kind of go up in this area, go around what I kind of indicated is one of the uh, horns of the animal. And we'll just get some some basic tones in. This is really thin, very, very, uh, almost washy, but not drips. Um, the reason I don't like drips is because, um, unless I'm using thicker paint, it takes a while for it to set up before you paint back over it. So I like to keep my first lay in like this, more of what I refer to as a scumble. Scumble meaning you're just kind of rubbing the paint on. You're not, you're not really applying a lot of paint. So what we're doing here is we're getting a lot of tones down here. A lot of these tones. And because I'm using a brush this large, um, 
they go down pretty quickly. So, and I'm also on a little bit of a toned board. The board that I'm using is, uh, I've toned it with some acrylics and I've kind of made it kind of a, a gray value of flesh tone. Uh, so it's very brown, blue, a lot of gesso mixed into it. And it gives me a nice base to work off of. I don't always use the, sometimes I make them more warm, sometimes I make them more cool. So I'm mixing up, I've taken some, um, I haven't talked about the colors I've laid out, so I'll do that as I'm speak, as I'm painting. And I picked up a little bit of uh, uh, raw sienna, which I actually laid out, don't paint with it all that much. But this time I decided I could see where I could put some warms into the piece. So we're kind of laying this out with a little raw sienna, a little bit of green. And a lot of this is going to be very gestural, meaning that it's not going to have a lot of, of refined detail into it. It's going to have a lot of just uh, brush marks, which what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at the order of importance or the hierarchy that I'm looking at in terms of, uh, of the elements that I'm using. And what I see is the most important is, without a doubt, the animals. So that becomes first. That's the part I want to be the most refined. Then as we move away from them, we move into the, the trees, which might be second, and then the shrubbery or kind of foliage, whatever you want to refer to it as, that would be third. And so in terms of an order of importance, animals, trees, foliage. So just let's get some stuff down here. Don't, do not ever in your initial stages be afraid to be wrong. Just guess and go for it. And if you're wrong, you're going to do adjustments as I am going to do. I'll do adjustments as I move further into it. So pretty briefly, I've got pretty much most of these background elements kind of laid in. The, the dark of the tree up in there, I haven't, so I'm going to do that next, and then we're going to get right into the animals. Because as I mentioned, the importance, the order of importance, that's going to have a lot to do with the order of amount of time I spend on each area. So obviously I'm going to spend most of the time on the animals. Nice little green and brown mixed back into some of that color and we'll just kind of get, just use the brush sparingly and let the brush do the work. Uh, if you're overworking and you're trying too hard to create the illusion of whatever the image is, then what I find is you're trying to overwork it. You need to let the brush do as much of the work as possible until you, the time that you want to refine. It's obviously not that time. I don't want to refine at this stage. And there's more in here. I want to, I'm going a little slow, so I'm going to pick it up a little bit. bit of foliage coming in here and I don't like that brown but that's okay. Now we're going to go back we're going to put the uh, the dark tree shapes in and then go right to the animals and spend really most of the time painting the animals but this is what I call we're setting up for the animals. As I said they're, they're the stars so to speak. Um, a line I heard when I was a student in school was to set the stage and then bring in your actors. And that's what we're doing. We're setting the stage, not refining the stage, just kind of setting it up. So what that does is it helps know your value scheme. In other words, I know when I now when I paint uh, the water buffalo, I know how dark or light I might want him to be because I he's already working against the background that is approximately what I want. I don't know why I left that. Who knows? We'll resolve it at the time it needs to be resolved, hopefully. I always assume, um, I, I, I approach it and I know people have said, well, you look like you know what you're doing. And I can, I can answer that by saying, to a degree, the answer is yes. But to a degree, I'm guessing and I'm assuming from past experiences, past knowledge, that what I am doing 
is correct. But I'm not arrogant enough to assume that I'm, it is. In other words, I'm trying to say it may be correct, but you know, it may be wrong. So because of that, I kind of coined this saying that I use in class a lot when I teach, and that is paint like you know what you're doing and assume you're probably wrong. And if you think about that, what that means is proceed with gusto, so to speak. It's a word that, that's a word from the past, huh? Uh, and uh, correct where need be. Okay? So we've kind of got that kind of laid up. The only thing that I really want to do is right down behind these animals, it gets a little darker. So I take took some green, taking a little bit of the, I'm going to take a little white because I don't want it to be too dark. Green, a little bit of of um, raw sienna. Now this, I'm afraid that might be a little too, no, it's not. Son of a gun. See, surprise myself. I'm going to throw a little more blue into it. I'm not happy with it. I want a little bit more blue. There we go. Kind of, I'm going to kind of bring it down so I can overlap some stuff over it. And then it goes kind of behind these guys a little bit down in here. Lose edges. Do not feel like you have to paint right up to this beautiful line you've drawn because what that will do is that'll create a very stiff quality to the finished work that you do. You want to really be bold and paint, paint over those edges. I'll tell you what, even if you do a really refined drawing and you paint over them kind of loose in the beginning, you're still going to see them. Most people are afraid of losing their drawing. I'm not, in this case, because the drawing's not that great. So, the drawing is just indications. And if nothing else, it's a great little practice thing for anybody to do, is to just practice these quicker paintings, you know. I came up with this quick studies class that I have taught for some 30 odd years, and I don't think it's the end all and answer, but for me it's a combination of recreation, practice and learning and exploration for that matter and it's always good to kind of push yourself test yourself then you know do a quick painting if you like it go back and do a little bit more to it if you don't like it you can wipe it out i've wiped out many a painting okay that gives us i the only thing i see is sometimes some warmer transitions that occur so i'm just this is just the Rossi and I'm just smudging in here and here and there just to add a little bit of a warmth and character into it. Okay, we got enough of this stuff going on. Let's get the guys going, okay? Uh, now, they're darker. I want them darker than the tree. I don't want, in fact, that tree might be a little too dark. I might want to lighten that uh, because I want them to stand out. So for my dark, I almost always use ultramarine and burnt umber. That's just a combination. Occasionally I will use uh, um, asphaltum instead of umber, but because it's a it's kind of a nice color, but it allows me to um, get a really beautiful strong dark. So what I'm going to do with this little brush here, this is, by the way, this is a just a gesso brush. Um, I'm not using all my really great rosemary brushes at this point. That's what I use when I want to refine. When I want to refine. So these are kind of some cast shadows. I'm going to talk a little bit about light and shadow in a little bit as we move along into it and give you a little bit of the way that I think when I paint light and shadow, um, particularly when I paint from a camera. Uh, camera does, it, it reads strong light or strong shadow unless you have a tripod and you do a really long exposure, which you couldn't do with these guys because they're moving. Uh, but once you understand that, you'll realize that, um, I'm just trying to get some anatomy kind of correct. Uh, anyway, once you get that, once you understand that, you realize that if you have a lot of detail that you can see in the light areas that you're painting, 
you begin to realize that that's what the camera has exposed for. It's, and that's why you have all this nice detail. What it didn't do when it did that is it did not expose very well for the shadows. So what happens very often when you have a lot of nice detail in your lights, your shadows go a little dense, a little dark. Where if you were painting from life, you would notice that your shadows, you can look into your shadows. Our, our eye is much better than a camera because what we, what we can do with our eye is we can look into those shadows, see detail, because we can, then we can focus on. So if a camera focused on the shadows, for example, all the lights would be completely bleached out. You'd have almost no detail. So in this case, it's pretty much light down in here. The shadows um, occupy the strength of the animal, but it also uh, looks quite simple. So what you really have to begin to train yourself to do is to learn how to look into a photograph as opposed to what I, I refer to. Don't look at the photograph, try and look into it. In other words, understand what's going on. In the, if you look carefully, one of the really cool things, by the way, you guys, with computers is you can get two exposures. You can get an exposure for the lights, in which case your shadows will go very dense. And you can also get an exposure for the shadows, in which case, so um, I do know individuals that make two prints if they're going to work from, or work off two images. They work off a shadow image and they work off a light image. In this case, I'm working off of one. Uh, having uh, been a, a freelance illustrator for ever, uh, it seemed like forever, honestly, uh, really 70s and 80s, uh, I learned a lot about working from photography. And I became aware of the pitfalls and the um, advantages of working from photography. There are advantages, obviously. Your image doesn't move. Um, the light doesn't change. So you've got all those. It, and you can focus in on, a, on detail easily if you want to. But you also lose the color effect as to what is really happening with the light and shadow. And very often when people work from uh, photography, they will work way, way too contrasted. I feel like I'm taking too long, so you, you hope what you're doing is you're seeing me speed up a little bit here. Try to be too accurate too soon. It's more accurate, think about this. It's more important to be accurate towards the end of your painting than at the beginning. That doesn't mean you throw, you know, uh, your, your fate to the wind and just do anything. But don't be afraid to lose things because... Most people that have drawn or painted for any period of time, um, I find they're actually better than they think they are. But because we spend all of our really formative years in art, learning to, I mean, learning and teaching ourselves and having fun just drawing, that it's very uncomfortable to give up on that, to give up on your drawing and all of a sudden turn around and paint mass, which is what painting is. Painting is about surfaces, drawing is more about um, contours. So, meaning the edges. So I wanna kinda of go over that, I don't really want that to be that neat. I'm gonna, the face, most of the face that I see is, I guess you call it a face, huh? Uh, most of the face is in light. And then there's cast shadows on them. And there's a lot of reflected light. Now, talk about that when I get to it. I don't want to, I hate to talk about things before I get to it, so, because it'll make more sense. All right, so we've got this guy, we got kind of his muzzle, his ear back in here. A couple of, we're going to place, these are placeholders. And I, I guess I use that phrase a lot, I've been told. Uh, placeholders, meaning, that's where I think it goes, okay? As opposed to, this is right on the money. And I'll adjust those because all of a sudden I'm gonna see it in mass. I'm not gonna see it in a um, linear form, which is what I see particularly in the beginning stage. Let's get this back guy in. Uh, 
I'm going to keep him the same value for now. Same kind of color, same value. And what I want is, I don't want him to be as refined as this guy. He's more lost in shadow, which is fine. Here's the back side of this guy. So sometimes people will do this. They'll go, geez, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lose that edge. Well, I'm giving you permission right now. Lose that edge. Lose that edge. Have some fun with it. See how good you are. If you want your painting to look absolutely perfect from the beginning, chances are your painting is going to come out very stiff because you've you've been so uh, concerned with the accuracy right from the beginning, 100% accuracy, that you're basically kind of, okay, I've got to get that ear in. So I'm painting with this nice big sloppy brush because I don't want to be too accurate. Um, just interrupt real quick. Uh, lots of people are watching from all over the place. Sure. <laughs> And thank you all for joining. We're trying something new, so I hope that uh, the stream is coming through okay on Facebook. Um, we're also <clears throat> streaming live with the Academy of Art University's YouTube page. So um, I am trying to monitor who's watching, and uh, I really appreciate you joining. Rafael is in Italy and making dinner while she's watching. And... <laughs> um, We've got Bob Frazier and Khalees and Debbie from Chicago and Melinda Walker from Italy, Gregory Harrison, Bodil, Carolyn Rogers, Brandy. Um, let's see, I'm missing lots Keep of people. Going. Ashley Young, Susan Atkinson. Um, Holly said, hi, thanks for doing this. Um, Mina said, if you use photo reference on a digital device, we can see more of the info in the shadows. Which is um... you can it's it's an exposure thing. You have to expose. You have to if you see more detail in the shadows, uh, you're not going to see as much detail in the lights. And so uh, I try and find a very comfortable way of doing it. And uh, I work I work from digital. Um, I haven't set it up in my studio yet on a large screen. I find I'm not as comfortable, and it's probably because of the years I spent um, painting from photos. And so I feel pretty comfortable. The only good thing I can do now is I can actually adjust my photographs on the computer. So that's kind of nice. Um, it's still better, honestly, you guys, if you can go outside and paint. Obviously, uh, you, it's going to be almost impossible to go outside and paint something like this because, you, you know, I've gone to the zoo and I've done bears and I've done gorillas on site as they move. Um, and those are really kind of rough looking studies that you're doing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's great. It's great practice. It's just wonderful. It's fun too. That, uh, another thing, that's the other thing that I, I, I'm constantly having to talk to uh, uh, individual beginning students uh, about is a lot of times they get very frustrated because it's not coming out terrific. And it's like, you constantly have to remind yourself that the reason you got into this in the first place is because it was fun. And you should never let that part of it go. I don't care if you bomb one, they come out terrible, but don't let that part go. It's just the way it goes. Some are going to come out really good, and you never know when that's going to happen. I mean, I've gone in feeling terrible and come out with better paintings than when I go in and I feel really good and 100%. So... I wish I could say why, because I really can't. All I know is it's like, sometimes it works, and that's, I'm painting live, and I feel that about what I'm doing now. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. So hopefully we'll get it to work. Now I'm gonna go in, because I wanna get some detail in this area. I mean, and I, what I did is I painted it thin enough where just so you know, I can go in darker. For example, I'm just gonna show you. There's some brown and some blue with just maybe a little bit of, medium into it. So if I want to go in darker, see, I can go in darker. Hopefully you can see that. And if I need to lighten it, I can. But for right now, I want to get everything set up. So next thing I'm going to do is paint kind of the lights on the um, the animal itself. For that, I'm, I'm using, I actually have some unbleached titanium, which is just kind of a slightly uh, warm, 
a warm neutral white. You can use white just as easily. Anyway, and I'm putting a little blue, a little bit of a raw sienna into it. It's, it's kind of cool, maybe a little earth tone, a little brown. And I'm trying to come up with a color that feels right. I want it darker than this. Now I'm close there, but I think I can go a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and a little bit of cad red light, because those are complements and they will kind of um, offset each other. So you won't go too red or too blue. So you can actually go back and forth with those two colors. Now let's try it again. Okay, that feels good. So I'm gonna stay with that. I've got like a number eight filbert here. So we're gonna kind of lay that in lay that in. We're going to overlap a little bit. Lauren Sacramento said, love the loose start. I want to keep a loose finish too, so it's hopefully it's not a start. Obviously, it's not going to be a tight finish just based on time. You know, we're stuck with, with I could do a longer one, um, which would be fun, but it gets finishing paintings from a spectator point of view, <laughs> gets to be kind of boring. Um, because you're doing very, now I'm doing big changes quickly. As you go to refine and you really, what happens is you work more in small areas. And because of that, it's not as, and it takes longer. It's just, you're slowing down, you're being more discretionary. So at this point, it's kind of, this is kind of a nice impressionistic, more of, more of what people might call a plein air type of, a, of an approach, where it's very direct a la prima painting. And um, it's kind of the way that I paint anyway, when I paint on my own. The difference is I, don't, I paint a little bit slower. So what I'm doing now, I would still probably be working on uh, the feeling of the background. than I would. So we're gonna get that in. His snoot gets quite a bit warmer and he kind of gets a little dark as he goes down right about in here. So we're gonna put that little bit of tone in, kind of pull it up. I see a little bit of tone, a little darker. Whoop, too dark. Push it right back into the paint. Goes too dark, just push it. You already have wet paint down, push it back in. So what you do in instances like that is you just, you're correcting. And as I said, you're gonna correct all the way through it. It's just the way it is. I mean, it's just, I doubt very much if you're gonna put a stroke down and you go, well, that's perfect. I won't, uh, I won't mess around with that anymore. But let's go down here, get his horns in, get this guy, and then we can start worrying about how much we can refine. So I'm gonna take this area right in here. It's a little warmer. It gets some, I'm gonna play with a little color now. I'm gonna, throw a little bit of warmth into it. So I, I throw a little cad red light into the color mixture I had. Kind of like that. It's, it's warmer than I see there. And in essence, it, for all I know, it may have been warmer in reality. Because again, we're interpreting what a camera did. Let's and what, well, I'll tell you what, what I found overall is if you get your values correct, you can do all kinds of uh, fun things with color that maybe aren't as exactly like it appears in your, um, your piece of reference. Sorry about the um, live stream not being as, uh, even on YouTube, I guess it's not quite. Well, we're still working that part of it out. Resolution isn't quite the same, so. Hopefully, hopefully you can all see it clearly. Yeah, I hope you. I hope it's coming out. Um, whether the painting comes out good, I hope. <laughs> I literally hope you guys get a good image on your um, monitor. You know, we're all stuck in this kind of situation, and the reason that I started doing this in the first place is because we are stuck in this situation. I've been, besides teaching my classes uh, online, I've been doing a lot of painting, working on a show uh, that was actually scheduled for 
April 18th. And believe it or not, we're still going to do it. We're just not doing it. We're going to do it online. And it's, uh, it will be a, a lot of Cuba stuff that I've been doing. We're going to, it will be posted online and I'll probably end up doing a live demo um, of something from Cuba. Uh, really to benefit the gallery. These, you got to, guys, the poor damn gallery. I really feel bad for galleries. I mean, you know, gallery sells art. We paint art. So I can be in my studio painting, but a gallery can't be in their gallery selling, you know. And I really feel bad because they're a very important part of our, um, our as artists, of our economy. Um, we rely on them. Um, and also I miss kind of hanging out with the gallery people. I, I love the gallery people I'm with. I really do. They're just wonderful people. Um, uh, and they have the welfare of the artist always. I mean, obviously they have to work to stay in business, but they do have the welfare of the artist. They love art and artists in general. So it's one of the things that I, I really hate to see. I know restaurants are hurting, and, but we don't hear a lot. I mean, I, you hear a lot on the news about the restaurants. You hear a lot on the news, you know, about businesses in general, but you don't hear much about galleries and it may be because uh, many people look at art as a disc discretionary spending. Um, there are many people that don't, <laughs> that don't see it as discretionary. They see it as uh, an important part of their life. And, you know, God bless those people. That's all I can say. They're really, um, they're why we do this. We do, I do it as, as I had a great, uh, one of my best teachers when I was in school is Don Putman. And he used to say, he had this great little saying, he says, I paint to please myself and I hope the pleasure is contagious. And that's, I think, that could almost be a mantra for a lot of painters, uh, myself included, because that's literally what we do. We paint because we love it and hopefully other people do. Also, I like, uh, I find, I like teaching. I, I like helping other people get to the point where I got because I had wonderful influences that helped me get to this level. You know, it, they gave me a lot of information and then it was up to me to practice it and get frustrated and Okay, so we don't want to go much further with that right now. I want to get the horns in. We're at about halfway through. That's the way I'm looking at it. So hopefully uh, we'll get this thing working and making sense. Got to get those horns. They're light. I want to get a tone back around them so I get the shape correct. And what color are they? Well, right now they're almost the whitest thing. I don't want to go to the whitest white yet. Uh, I don't want it because I want to leave room to go darker and go lighter in the painting. So what we have here is a little bit of white, a little bit of the uh, titanium buff. I might throw a little blue and brown into it. By the way, titanium buff, you can buy it. It's called unbleached titanium, but you can also make it. It's, it's pretty much a lazy man's way of, uh, which is, I can be accused of that many times. Uh, of getting to a, a specific color, you know. So basically, you can mix it with a little white, a little umber, maybe a little yellow ochre, a little brown. And we're just gonna kind of, when the paint doesn't move well on the surface, it means you need more, uh, you need to loosen that paint up with some medium. The medium can be turp, it can be, turp will really loosen it up. Uh, I use linseed oil, I mean, excuse me, uh, safflower oil. Um, I haven't used linseed for a while, although I ha occasionally, every now and then when I don't have safflower, I will use linseed. Uh, I use um, a little bit of turp. I just try and get it to a consistency where it lays down without me having to press really hard. If I have to press really hard, uh, the, the overall painting tends to have a much more of a clumsy characteristic. 
and I, I want it to feel fresh. So the shadow at some point, excuse me, the, the horns at some point go into shadow. Didn't mean to interrupt myself, but it's light up here and then it goes into shadow. The shadow's darker. So I can take that color, I can add a little bit of blue to it because something that is a shadow, I'm gonna, this gets into a little bit of, of understanding um, outdoor light. Uh, a uh, an element that is facing upward as this tends to have a little bit of cool in it because of the sky. The sky is cool. So the sky, in essence, is lighting that. The sun is lighting this while the sky is lighting this. So it tends to be, it's darker because it doesn't, sun, nothing's going to out uh, intensify sunlight. So it's a little darker, a little grayer, but a little bit of blue thrown into it. So in this case, that ended up a little bit more violet than I wanted, but I'm going to live with it anyway. And there's a few little shadows here and there that are being cast on that. So we're going to leave it alone. It isn't right where I want it, but it's far enough. So I'm going to, I want to come back to it. So I want to get this stuff laid in as quickly in the next, I'm going to say five to 10 minutes. Um, first thing we're going to do is go back to that kind of base color that was right about there. That's about it. Didn't know it hit it so fast. Polly wanted to know if you're using all rosemary brushes. Uh, mm -hmm. When I go to, yes, when I go to uh, my bristles, they're basically rosemary um, ivories. I have, I have these wonderful uh, rosemary, um, but these very soft kind of synthetic mangoes, but I only use those pretty much for portrait and for super refined areas, more towards the end. I, I don't use them at all in the beginning. I do know that artists, artists that do, so believe me, everything I'm telling you is what I do. I know other artists can tell you something totally different and it works great for them. This is what I found. I'm giving you what I found, what I find works for me. I also always tell people uh, something about when I teach. When I teach, I always try and teach the easiest way. Not the only way, the easiest way. Uh, the, the fantastic artist Richard Schmidt, and a lot of you may know him, made a great statement one time that each artist should have more than one way of going into and completing a painting. And I wholeheartedly agree, and it's because if one thing isn't working, you go to another. So we'll go ahead and hit, put, this is what we call dap of white. It's a little bit of light kind of piercing down through the leaves. And I see a little bit, helps define a little bit of the anatomy. Right about there. And then there's some on his backside, which I scrubbed up here. <laughs> People would just because I felt like I had too much paint on my brush. Oh, that's the method. That's the reason. I, I figured I was gonna I was gonna put some strokes down and I was gonna lay too much paint down. So whenever I do I do that sometimes unthinkingly. You can do it, I do it on my easel, I do it on a whatever's handy. I do it on my arms and no, I don't. <laughs> I usually come out at the end of a painting looking kind of like the painting. Sorry about the fluctuation here in the So we're gonna kind of leave it there for right now. Once again, don't wanna to go too much further uh, just because I wanna have an area to go back and refine and I'll decide how much I can get by refining. Right now I can't tell because I'm not far enough along. So we're gonna go into this guy, into the background. Now, one of the things that I see in him is a little bit of shadow detail if I look close. And so I took this color and I added more blue and a little bit of of alizarin crimson into it, and I see his antler, or his horn, I guess it is, the difference between horns and antlers. What I learned is antlers, they shed each year, and horns, they keep forever. So if I'm wrong, someone correct me. 
wildlife specialist, Ann Anthony Nelson. What's that? I'm asking our son. Oh, I'm not What's a yeah, I'm not a wildlife specialist. I'm a, I I love painting them. I the only reason I've gotten into doing some wildlife a few years back is I used to be involved in the uh, wonderful Arts for Parks show, and I started painting moose because we traveled to uh, to Jackson Hole, Wyoming once. And actually, we traveled there several times, but first time I went, I had never seen a moose in real life. And it was so stimulating that um, I took a lot of photos. I came home and I started painting moose. And I uh, was very fortunate one year to win an award for one of my paintings. But what I found is uh, I could only sell that kind of subject pretty much in the Rocky Mountain states. And so I don't live there, and I already had other galleries established, so I haven't done as much wildlife. But it's a kick, man. I think a year ago, I was teaching a wildlife class at the academy and did a gorilla, I did a tiger, and it was just fun. It was, I mean, sometimes you gotta do stuff for fun, right? It's not, it's not always about, can I sell it? Um, a lot of times it's, just want to have a little fun here so, and test yourself. Can I do this? Am I good enough to pull this off? Uh, do I do it pretty well? Do I do it? And do I like doing it? Would it? I guess the bottom line is do I want to do more? So I'm finding a little bit of information in his muzzle back here, but most of it disappears into shadow. And I did notice that the background itself um, cuts in right here and defines him a little bit more. So I need to kind of change some of that. That helped. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit of light. I can, if I look carefully, wow, I can see all kinds of stuff. I see a little bit of structure around his eye. Looks like it's about here. Real soft value change, not a very pronounced value change as you guys can see. Uh, a little bit up here. Marcus wanted to know if you have a favorite paint brand. That's a great question. No, <laughs> this is my answer. Uh, I, I like Gamblin. If I had to stay with one type of paint, and I like Gamblin, but I, I use some Daniel Smith colors that I like. I like their, they have a sepia that I like. Um, I use, I use some, Utre I like, I love Utrecht's uh, Naples Yellow Light. Um, although Gamblin has a pretty darn nice Naples yellow light too. So, uh, so like I said, if I was just to pick one, I'd probably go with Gamblin, but I don't have one. Um, hopefully that answers it. I'm not, I use some Windsor. I have Windsor Newton. I've got a lot of, I got some brands that I bought in Italy that, are kind of neat, they're real specialty colors. I have some specialty colors uh, that I use for certain things. Like if I'm gonna do a Bougainvillea, I need something along the line of a Thalo Red Rose or a really great magenta. So I, lay my, I usually have what I call a workhorse palette, which is kind of what I have today with a couple of augment, and I will augment it or change it up a little bit based on the subject that I'm painting. If the subject that I'm painting needs more than I will do more. Now, I've got everything laid in, so I'm about 20 minutes or so away from, from what I would call the hour. The last two ones I've done have gone like an hour and 19, so I'm trying to hold this at an hour because I know all of you guys have so much other stuff you need to do during this time. The My Maddie paint uh, was really yeah. nice too. I have a few of those. And I think that's what I get in Italy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Really just going to, you know, every, uh, for the last 12 years, every year I've done a uh, workshop in Italy. And we have to, uh, we had to cancel this year, obviously. Um, and it's really, it's really a shame. Um, we go over there and, and next year we're actually going to go to France. We already had it planned. Um, so I'm doing, I'm doing some subtleties right now in case you're wondering. Things that I'm beginning to see 
there's some more light happening on this guy. You can, and a dapple of light can happen anywhere, by the way. It doesn't just has to have to happen where you see it, because light could be coming through in a lot of different areas. So I'm going to put a little light right there and a little bit on his ear, maybe a little bit more, just to add a little warmth into that ear. And go back and add a little, we don't want to over define this guy. Remember he's, here's our star. This guy's our star. So if I'm gonna make something really good or refined, that's more what I want to make really refined. I'm gonna explain what dappled lighting. Dappled lighting. Uh, if you think of Renoir, uh, double lighting is when light filters through something and only lights it in certain spots, and so such as this shadow. These are all lights from, I, and I like that. I mean, I could, I could have, if I wanted to, just painted them solid, but I like that part of the atmosphere that kind of creates uh, some different kinds of lights. I'm going to take, and I'm going to start to push it a little bit lighter in the snoot. So we start to pull it off. And I want to leave enough time, about a good 10 minutes, maybe, to go back into the background and do a little bit more work. Because it's set up, but it's not where I want it to be. A couple more questions. What's your opinion on water mixable oils? Really cool. I'll tell you, uh, water mixable oils. They're fun. Um, I have used them twice uh, on location. I've never used them in my studio. Uh, gone to Mexico, and I didn't want to mess with trying to bring, so I brought water soluble and painted on location with them. And actually, I found them really kind of nice. And I know when we went to Cuba last January, Anna brought, I set her, I, I whoops, that's really crummy. Uh, I, I set her, my kit, up, and she painted in them. So why don't you say how you felt about them? I like them better now. They seem to have, um, um, the mixture is, is much better. It used to be, when I tried it years ago, it seemed sticky, but the mixture is very much like oil. So it's, the cleanup is easier and non-toxic, and uh, they're not bad to work with. Yeah, I find the same thing. I actually find the same thing. I think you got to, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but not as much as you would think. Um, you, you need to get the water-soluble uh, mixes. In other words, don't just mix it with water. Mediums. Yeah, you need to get the medium. In fact, I've got a bottle of it. Um, right here, it's a Daniel Smith water-soluble modified linseed oil. And it works. You, you have to do it a few times. Do uh, The only thing that I've never tried is anything large. Um, and Because I, I don't know how it would work. What's your workhorse palette? My workhorse palette is titanium white, either that or permelba, both of which I like. Um, then I go to uh, yellow ochre. I use yellow ochre on every palette I set up. Um, and everybody has kind of a go-to color. Yellow ochre would be my go-to color. I use it a lot. Um, I, use, I mix it in a lot of areas. It just, it's, it just works well for me. Other people may have other colors that are in their go-to. So after that, very often, a warm red, like a cad red light, and an alizarin. I almost always have alizarin on my palette because I use it in many different ways. Um, I'm gonna put a little reflected light in here, you guys, just see, see. A little reflected light there, just a touch here, a little bit more than I see. So I kind of feel that. Um, then I go uh, ultramarine blue, always ultramarine blue, because I always have ultramarine blue and umber on my palette because that's my dark, that's my black. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using black. People have asked me many times, nothing wrong with it. So I learned 40 some odd years ago to work without black and I occasionally will use black. Uh, not that often, uh, night scenes maybe, uh, I'll, I'll work with a more limited palette. And if I use black, it's generally in the, a limited palette where I just have. So, let me keep going. I keep getting uh, sidetracked. I sidetrack myself. So, uh, after after we're talking about um, ultramarine blue, 
I use sap green. I prefer sap over viridian, and it doesn't matter. Uh, my reasoning is when I mix with viridian, uh, viridian tends to really be strong. Sap is a little bit more of what I call a mellow green. It's not real, it doesn't overpower. So, but occasionally I will, if I'm doing a painting that's got tons of greens in it, I may lay out uh, um, another green or so. But that, that would be it. And the final color would be uh, burnt umber. And burnt umber I use on every palette. Um, occasionally I switch off and I use asphaltum. I quit using it a while ago uh, because the price of it got outrageous. And so um, I can do pretty I can do pretty much the same thing with burnt umber. Okay. I got enough of this right now. I put a little bit of indication of detail in the horns. I can add more because I I did not paint the horns that light, if you recall. I told you when I painted them, I, I was leaving. So there was room where I could come in and go a little lighter down in here where the sun is a little lighter. So we get these nice, interesting subtleties. Uh, there are some areas in that horn I could, horn, yeah, horn. All right, I'm going to go back into his body. I'm going to go with a darker dark. And because I'm painting into wet paint, I'm going to add a little bit of my solvent-free gel, or I can add in um, the linseed oil. So it's a little bit looser. It's a little bit of a looser consistency of paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push darks now. I see a dark here. Look at, can you guys see that? I hope. How much darker it is. Uh, back here on the shoulder, I see it get a little darker. See, this is, again, learning how to look into your, your photo. The leg gets quite dark. The leg is really facing downward. And one of the things, some of these areas that face downward do get a reflected light, and the reflected light tends to be slightly warm. And I will add a little bit of that in as we move along. Thank you all again for watching. I Forgive me if I've missed your posts or questions. Um, so many people watching from Italy, I love it. Thank you. Grazie mille. <laughs> My cousin Fabiola and you know, Rose Morelli and Raffaella. And... Yeah, Italy's our home away from home, you guys. And they, most of those guys over there know it. We see them whenever we go. It's a wonderful place. Uh, my, my favorite place to paint on location is Venice. I just, the reason being, and I've stated this, I did a, a Venice demo a couple weeks ago. Um, you could go to Venice, someone could blindfold you, take you, spin you around, take your blindfold off. I don't care where you're facing, you got a painting staring you right in the face. It's that paintable. It is that um, incredible in terms of its, uh, its offerings, I guess would be the best way to put it. And so, although I must admit, we sure enjoyed painting in Puglia. We, last year we enjoyed, along with a whole bunch of people, uh, at one of our workshops, painting in Sicily. And so, and I don't wanna leave out Holland. We actually went to Holland a few years ago and had a, just a heck of a good time painting there. So it's not that one place is necessarily better than the other. Uh, truthfully, just give me Italian food and I'm happy. And so between the Italian people, their cuisine, uh, their great interesting history and countryside, great little Tuscan villages. Uh, a few years ago, we discovered, I, I don't know how long ago, the island of Elba while we were over there. And we had a chance to paint there along with a bunch of other artists. And it was, one, it was great. It was just spectacular. In fact, we liked Elba so much that we went back the following year and did a second workshop there. So Italy's got a lot to offer. Everywhere in Italy is beautiful. Yep. I'm pushing the eyes a little darker. I'm gonna do the same with the nostril. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit of aluminum crimson to that nostril, just because I know it'll darken it and really make it pop a little bit more. It's subtle, I don't even know if you guys can see it. Um, it did make a difference there. So we have kind of this guy. Now I'm gonna go back into him and I'm gonna try and find some warms. And for that, I'm adding a little tan red light. 
uh, not a lot, and maybe a touch of ochre into that same mixture that I was using for the dark. Whoa, too much cad red light. A little bit more ochre, raw sienna. This is probably a little too strong, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Yeah, it is a little strong, so I'm gonna mix. Yeah, that's pretty good. Does it, it looks okay on screen? Same here. <laughs> yeah, you see that? Now that's reflected light. Now, why do we even have it? Well, the sun's going down and it's hitting the ground, warming the ground up, and the ground comes back and bounces back light into form. As it bounces back light into form, it warms it up. The areas that are not warm are not receiving reflected light, and they're not receiving, if they're getting cool, they're receiving skylight, but there are areas that don't receive either. Those areas tend to be your darkest darks. Uh, I hopefully, I know that takes a while for that to sink in, but hopefully you guys understand that. Uh, and that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm painting in these kind of warms. So if you have a white animal, let's say you're painting a white swan, you may have on, on white, the shadows that are illuminated from the sky tend to be very uh, blue because it's on white. But we've got a dark animal here. Uh, and because of that, we don't see the blues. The only time we see it is when we get up into the, uh, the uh, um, horns. I keep wanting to call them antlers. Okay, so I've, I've introduced some warms back in here. I want to keep moving because I do want to get some in the background. I do. The only thing I want to do right now to the animal is go, and we're almost at, a, we're about five minutes short of an hour, so I'm probably going to go about 10 minutes long. So bear with me, if you will. Uh, what I did is I mixed up a lighter version of what we have here because I've got two versions now, but there are some areas that are quite light. Not as light as any of the lights on here, but more like what we see right in, in here and in here. And I could, I could even paint that further. But right there, we get a beautiful light right here. So I'm gonna add enough medium where when I put my stroke down, it sits on top and doesn't blend into the paint. I'm gonna go a little lighter. Let's do it again. There, there's a little bit in here. Dapple light fun. And maybe a touch warm, and you can vary it as you see it. I see it get a little warmer right here, and right about in here. Okay, and on his backside, he's getting a lot of light right here. Not quite light enough. Let's do it again. So we're going to hold off on this for a little bit because I want to move to the background and try and get this whole thing working as a whole and not just a couple of animals on a background. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the trees. Uh, in here, we have a little bit of light on it. So the light tends to be warmer, particularly up in here. So we'll kind of... And I see some greens, so I can move some greens into that. And I can go back to the warms. You just kind of play. Have fun. Again, assume you're, when you're doing these quick ones, you have to paint like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. Okay, that's very, that's probably the most important thing I've said this whole thing. Is even if you don't, just, just go for it. At some point you have to sit back and evaluate. There's not a question about it. And that's, that's the beauty of a longer painting is you actually have the time to sit back and evaluate. I haven't stepped back from this once and that's unusual for me. So when you're applying the paint right now, are you pretty light touch? Yeah, very light touch. Very light touch. If it's not going down, I'm adding medium. As you apply paint onto paint, unless you want it to mix, and there may be times that you do, there may be times that you want to smear it into uh, another, but if you don't, basically that's pretty much what you're doing right there. And I'm not going to go much further. I'm going to hit this other tree over here. And there's no real light. Oh, I see some light. Come think of it. It's kind of a gray light. So that, that color I was working with. And it's back on a little bit on here. Oh, there's trees back there. Yeah. Okay. 
So we're pulling a little light. There's a little light on a branch up in here. I don't even have a tree in there, but I'm just gonna put the light and then I'll put the branch in. There, maybe a little bit in here. I'm gonna go back and put that branch in and then we'll put a little bit of foliage into it and make the whole thing um, come together and then maybe spend a couple of minutes getting the foreground working. Okay. So now let's take some foliage. I need to go back to my brush, my foliage brush. Some greens, mix it into the brown. Nice big soupy color here. A little bit of ochre into it so we get some nice greens. And we're going to go a little bit darker in here and do a second layer. To answer your question, Fernanda, about the um, water-soluble oils, I believe they're less toxic. Um, yeah, I think so. They're still oil. There's, Don't yeah. get me wrong. And there's something about the smell of oil paint that I love, which is really weird, but, <laughs> and the texture, I don't know, it's um, something about. Is that Fernanda from Dubai? Uh, yeah, who was in Italy with us. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Is she still in Dubai? I don't know. Are you still in Dubai? Um, Brent, can you take a photo? Yes, we'll, we'll definitely take some photos of this um, so that we're not at an angle. Uh, some of, it, right some of the stuff an becomes lighter and overlaps. And then we have some light areas of that are some of the foliage. It's actually catching light so i want to lighten so even though i painted some dark areas i want to get some of these light areas back in here too and it's a matter of kind of indicating them i don't like that basically so, using like, a gesso brush right for that yeah i'm using a big old gesso brush just like i said because number one even when i'm painting a long painting i'll do it and then at the very end if i feel i need to add smaller stuff i will do that but initially, yeah, I use, I use these large brushes a lot. Um, they're very, very helpful, by the way. Very much so. So I'm going to put some lights back behind where I see them. Back in here. And we're kind of painting with the notion of it being somewhat abstract. And foliage is, because fo particularly this kind of foliage, it's not like real clear cut. And we got some kind of drifting down some spots up in here a little bit more in here some negative space back in here this is a little bit too simplified so I'm going to add some blue to that color and I'm going to just scuff it do a little scuffing so it's not quite that simple green but I, I will use it as a base behind see that went too dark it started to blend with the actually antler itself. And there's really nice little piece of light. What brand water soluble oils? Uh, I think it's Artis, I don't know. Where the heck's my little kit? I don't know, I'm gonna, I'll find it. Okay, if I uh, can. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, it, truthfully, they were given to me by one of the distributors to see how I liked them. And that's what I use. I know Windsor Newton's got a pretty good grouping. Fernanda's still in Dubai. How is it in Dubai? We don't hear anything. Yeah, are you on lockdown there? Like we are? Lockdown, or what is it called? Shelter in place? <laughs> hey, you guys, I would have, just with regard to lockdown, um, any of you guys that want to become better artists, now is a great time, truthfully. Just paint. Paint yourselves crazy, man. I mean, just enjoy. You might as well. You know, it's, I think one of the great things that we have, like I said, I mentioned earlier, but one of the things I feel bad about galleries is we have the ability as artists to kind of, you know, paint and not, I'm hoping if the weather, as soon as the weather gets a little bit better here, I want to go outside and do a little bit. Um, just because I feel much the same as everybody, a little bit stuck inside. But uh, it's one of those things you can do. You can actually go outside and paint. and Or just paint your studio practice. I think 
Someone wrote on Facebook that we're all going to emerge out of this as either really good cooks or drunks. And I want to amend that. Or really good painters. Because I do think um, that's, one of the, that's one of the really advantages of what we do. Is we get to do this and the lockdown is only affecting it, us being outside. And even there, if you're social distancing and you're outside, you, you're more than able to go out and paint. I know my buddy Chuck Perdome up in uh, Reading is, I mean, he's going all over the place and painting. So, feel, feel fortunate to a degree that you, you are an artist and, um, you know, it's not like, it's not like playing a sport where you need to go, or golf courses are shut down. I bet that's driving some people absolutely crazy. Um, it doesn't mean I don't play golf, so I feel fortunate in that regard. Yet I do, again, I feel for some of these guys that have um, passions that they cannot pursue. And that's why I say artists, I believe, are lucky because we have a passion we can pursue. As long as everybody stays healthy, that's all. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. thing. Please stay healthy, stay locked down, do whatever you have to do. Paint your eyeballs out, do yeah. whatever you need to do, mm -hmm. but just... They're on lockdown in Dubai as well. I kind of thought, I kind of th thought everybody was, but I'm going to take a little brush. I'm going to take some of the stuff in the foreground and I'm going to add a little bit more texture to it, okay? So I've got some uh, solvent-free gel. I took some white. I mixed it into one of my kind of colors here along with some ochre. And I'm just going to kind of, very. it's not going very well, so I added some turp. I want it to. Is there a brand of gesso brush that you like? I don't know. This is a Blick gesso brush. I uh, bought one in Charleston, um, Escada, um, similar. I like these better because they're a little thicker. Uh, there, it's just, you kind of find what's comfortable. I found these because I was just messing around one time and I went, hey, that works pretty well. So you, you discover. putting a little bit of, we want these guys so they're in it. So we want to get some some of this stuff as light touch. If someone asked me a while ago, light touch? Yep, real light. Just, I just bare, I'm, the brush is, the, so you see me doing this? What it means, I'm getting closer each time and eventually I'm gonna to touch the surface. There we got a little thicker than I wanted, but it's okay. Let's see, hopefully you can see. Little bit of green back into that. He's got some greenery kind of overlapping him, kind of neat, kind of coming way up. Bob Frazier said it's also a great time to write some new songs, especially about the present situation. We'll look forward to, okay, to hearing Bob. them, Bob. <laughs> We're gonna get a concert, <laughs> Mr. Bob Frazier. And Ray said it's um, time to rack up some brush, brush mileage. One Who's, of my favorite Craig Nelson quotes. Who said that? Ray. <laughs> Funny, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're right, Ray. Yeah, but he's he's painting all the time. That's good. Nice to see some of these, not just ex-students, but ex-students that have become just exceptional artists in their own right, like Ray, Ray Bonilla there, um, tuning in. I miss some of these guys. We had them in class, and it was just fun and enlightening, and, and now they're out there doing it. Now that's working okay. I, the, I like that right there. I, I occasionally use a fan, and when I use a fan, it tends to be for this kind of stuff. You just want to get, and I'm using a ton of turp here, because a fan, so see what you're doing, we're kind of adding some. I'm gonna even go back to my brush because I'm not getting what I want out of it. I know the fan is too small for what I'm trying to achieve as quickly as I have added a little bit of warmth to it. 
And what I want to do is I want to get layers of color here. You're just tr trying to create the essence of the feeling of what's there, not being particular. Yeah. It's, you know, I could layer this kind of stuff forever. And uh, in doing so, create more of the illusion. Because what this is, is this is a lot of layers of weeds and dry brush. And so the only way that you can't do that in one pass, you have to make several passes over your painting in order to get that to work. See if I can put a little some of these little buds, which are kind of nice, one right in there. Oh, too big. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, that's why they invented the eraser. You just go back and carve it back to, to the way you want it to look. Put it in there like you know what you're doing. If it doesn't work, go back and add, carve whatever you need to carve into it. I hate to use too small of a brush for too many, although I know I need some. I even have a um, a little liner somewhere here. I thought I had it. Was that it? Yeah, a little. These brushes, these little liners, um, I, I will use it in a painting like this, right towards the end, maybe the last. 20 minutes or so, I might come in and do a little bit of this. There's a weed that comes up here. And it's just a matter of having enough medium on your paint, on your brush, or you would make, but you don't wanna to do too much of it. You do too much of it, it looks very, very, contrived. Okay, I've got about, I'll give it about three minutes and then we're going to call it quits. So if any of you guys have any questions, ask away. We're going to be doing these every Friday at noon. So we were going to call it lunch with, uh, lunch and painting with Craig. It's kind of a stupid title, but what the hell. Uh, and so next week I'll be doing something different. Don't know what yet. I'm doing this because I think someone said, do a... I think Daniel had requested the wildlife. Yeah, I don't know who it was. I know someone had requested wildlife, which is fine. Like I said, it was fun because I haven't done it for a while. And uh, I was actually going to be teaching a wildlife painting class at the academy this summer, but I don't think we're going to do that because I don't think we're going to have enough students for it. So we'll probably be doing something else. It's fun. You should go out and get a lot of information. A lot of people like cows, paint out animals like that. That's always fun. Birds, uh, seascapes. Someone requested a cityscape. I'll see what I can do about that because I can't pick a cityscape that's too complicated and, and try and get it done in an hour. Uh, but I may find something. We've got some great stuff that I shot when we were in London and. New York, and so we might end up doing something with that. I don't know. Maybe maybe post what you're interested in seeing. Uh, someone else had posted Still Life. Um, There's a lot of people. Clouds. The only problem with Still Life is there's so many people doing it. I just figured I'd try and do something that no one else is doing. Clouds? Someone called that request. Possibly. That. Skyscape with the landscape in, mixed in. Yeah, that's possible. Anything's possible if you, but some things, I mean, if you think about it, the cityscape, the only reason I bring that up is because it is so complicated, unless we pick part of a city and part, then you know, we could probably pull it off, but it's really, it's a rough thing to try and get that done in a, um, in the amount of time that I try, and I, like I said, it'll get, I'm trying not to make it too boring for anybody. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that we're kind of trying to be careful about what we ch what I choose to paint. Um, something that I think I can get done that people can get some information out of. That's the whole idea. It's the whole idea is for you guys to get 
maybe inspired and a little bit of information out of. So you can see I threw a, those last few strokes was really adding structure, a lot of structure to the, uh, the face. The last thing I, that I see is that I could probably clarify that horn as it moves down that way. This is pretty close to where I will leave it for now. Not, I would definitely put a lot more layers and I'm just using kind of the side of the brush. So sometimes I paint with the surface, sometimes I paint with the side, depends upon the effect. So in this case, there's the effect. And I can scrub, hopefully it looks good. If it doesn't, I just put another layer over it. And you put as many layers as you can over it until you're satisfied. And when you're satisfied, and it may be tactile, maybe what I need in this area is some thicker paint. In that case, what I might do is grab something like, like a palette knife and pick up more paint and scuff it down. I like some of that. It's adding some interesting marks. So you can see, actually, that actually helped quite a bit, truthfully. Just adding a little bit. A, a knife will give you a mark that you cannot get with a brush. Whether they're thin like this, and I can, I'll just do this with that quick. Let's, let's bring, because I see them. I'm trying to get more of a gray-green. Okay, you guys get the idea, I think. So I am gonna, um, about an hour and almost an hour and 15 minutes. Um, like I said, it's a little longer than I wanted to go, but hopefully you guys get the feel. Uh, I would definitely build more layers in here, more layers. The, the, the area that doesn't need necessarily layers, but needs maybe little care and adjustments and refinement would be the solid form up in here. Not quite crazy about the way it goes over his back. I want to maybe get a, a little bit more pull so it, we get the movement over him. Uh, kind of like some of these little marks in here, these abbreviated little little uh, areas, but that's basically what you can do, what I can do, I should say, in about um, an hour and 15 minutes. It's been a lot of fun. I love doing this. Um, I like giving you whatever I can as far as information and knowledge. It's what happened to me as a student um, when I was in my 20s is I had great influences, mentors, and I learned a lot from all those people. And I continue to learn. Sometimes I learn from the students like Ray out there um, that are in my classes. And one of the great things about being an instructor and being an artist is you see how damn good some of these young people are coming up and it makes you up your game. So I'm always trying to up my game. Okay? Paint. Have fun. See you next Friday. Bring your lunch. And we'll get something else going, okay? Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, everybody. I'm moving. <laughs> yeah. And we'll take... <laughs> we'll get in closer on this and take a still shot as well. So be well, everyone. Ciao, ciao. An area I don't like. Right.